Welcome to Be Joyful 24-7. It's the 26th of March today. I thought I'll take you through all the jobs that I'm doing this weekend, plus the seeds that we need to think about sowing for April. April's going to be another busy month, so I thought I'll uh, come into the garden. It's a lovely sunny day, unusual for this time of the year, but there are lots of jobs I'm going to get on with today, and I thought I'll take you through the things that I'm doing. So if you remember, uh, we sowed some peas. Uh, so this is the pea alderman and pea onward. Uh, they're looking really healthy. They're a little bit leaning towards one side. <laughs> That's the disadvantage of growing everything indoors, I suppose. But they'll be fine. I'm going to transplant this bed uh, with peas. So I'm going to be transplanting my pea alderman first. As I said, these are the tall growing varieties. So we're going to put one uh, so there are about two in each. Some of them haven't germinated, but I'm just going to transplant them. I'm pretty sure they will come. These are tough plants, actually. So I'm going to put them deep in the ground here, and then I'm going to go. I think I've roughly left about 40 centimetres. Ideally, you can give more spacing, but like I said, I always cram everything in. Worst case scenario, the plants are a little bit smaller, with you know, smaller heads, if it's like calories and things like that. So I don't mind that because they're all going to be used for home and I'm not looking for a prized cauliflower or something like that. So I always um, uh, push for space so the spacing are a little bit tighter. So I'm going to transplant two on this side, two on the other side and the idea is I can put a stake in the middle throughout this bed and I can put some rope or string or some sort and then the alderman peas can be supported from either side because like I said they do grow very very tall. So as you can see these were module sown. I put two in one module. Really healthy roots and I'm going to bury them deep. So I'm going to plant them deep I have left, I told you, roughly about 40 centimetres in between these two rows and the idea is to leave the stake in between. So don't worry about burying them deep, they'll be absolutely fine. And I'm going to finish transplanting uh, all my peas. So these are my pea onward. These were sown at the same time as the alderman. As you can see from the plant, these are a dwarf variety, so they only grow about 30 to 45 centimeter, I think, compared to the alderman. So I've put my alderman there. I'm going to carry on with the whole bed as peas, and we're going to plant the onward one. And it's actually an earlier cropping variety as well compared to alderman. So the idea was I get peas for a prolonged time as much as possible anyway. So yeah, we're going to transplant our pea onward here. The next job I'm going to do is my transplanting all my cabbages and calibris. Last year when I grew my cabbages and all my um, brassicas, I actually grew them double this size before I transplanted them. But then again, we were running behind a little bit with the whole gardening project. But it was really successful. I'm going to take my chance. They're not terribly big, but I think they'll be okay. It's only because coming April, I'll be sowing a lot of my frost sensitive plants and I'll run out of space in the greenhouse and inside the house. So I just thought I'll transplant them. And then I'll definitely be covering them over a fleece then, because just to protect them from slugs as well. And birds actually. Birds love brassicas, so you have to protect them. Even as they get a little bit older um, and they get a little bit bigger, you do need to protect them because birds, especially pigeons, love brassica leaves. So I'm going to be transplanting my cabbage greyhound and cabbage cabis. And I also sow Calabrese parthenon. So my beds are only about 80 centimeter wide. As you may have seen, I don't have a lot of space. For any calibres, the wider spacing you leave, the bigger the heads are going to be. So these cabbages would probably grow a lot bigger if I gave them a lot more space. 
but because we're only going to be using it for our household use i'm not expecting like huge heads because ideally if you grow a huge head and for a family of three like in our case or like a family of four you're not going to go through them that much anyway so it's okay i did i actually gave even lesser space last year and they were absolutely fine the only the, the only thing you need to remember is the wider the spacing is the bigger the heads of your brassica is going to be so this is about 80 centimeter wide so i'm aiming to put two against each other so it's like going to be like just two rows of them so i'm giving them 40 centimeters ideally if you could give them about 60 to 70 centimeters it'll be perfect but as i said i don't have the space so i'm going to give them like approximately 30 to 40 centimeters so I've dug a hole and I am going to plant them deep. So don't worry about burying all the stems underneath. It should be absolutely fine. So the next thing I'm going to transplant is my Calabrese Parthenon. Um, Calabrese, even more so than cabbages, need a lot of space especially this one grows massive the leaves are enormous so these definitely will need those 18 inches or about 60 centimeters definitely so i'm only planning to plant about so these beds are about 110 centimeter wide internally so i'm only planning to go i should really go two rows but i'm going to go three So again, you can really bury them quite deep. It's actually quite nice if you can bury them deep because it gives the stem a little bit of support and it grows a bit better. So I'm gonna plant it deep like that and it should be absolutely fine. So we're gonna talk about some failures this time. Normally, my beetroot boltardi is a really sure one and it goes really good in module sowing. I have no idea what I did wrong. I think it might have been dampening off issues. Dampening off is when you've overwatered or saturated your compost and it's not had good air circulation and light and this is what happens. But to be perfectly honest, I don't even know if it was dampening off because I didn't even have any germination in most of my modules. I don't know, maybe it was just old seal. It was old seal from last year that I sowed, but it did still have date on it, but it could have been an old batch that I bought last year. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't too bad. It all's not lost because there are a few. So I just thought I'll plant them in between my garlic because my garlic would be harvested in a couple of months time, I would say about eight to 10 weeks time. So if I plant these in the gaps, uh, by the time these are harvested, these will be established. So I'm only gonna go two rows, because like I said, beetroots can be modeled so. Um, so some of them only have like one in each module. In that case, I might just put two or three together. So I'm gonna put two rows of these beetroots and hopefully all these beetroots would produce some good beetroots. But like I said, yeah, you don't always get successes you sometimes get failures as well and you have to live and learn so i might just be actually sowing some more beetroot this month again let's talk about another failure so if you remember in my february seed sowing i sowed all my onion seeds so this was i think it was the shallot this was the shallots and that was the onion red baron again i don't know what happened last year i didn't have this issue but all my onions did not grow again i think that probably is the problem i think i had too much water in these um, compost and you can actually see a little bit of sort of like moss growth i think the compost was probably oversaturated and i didn't have a good airflow i was trying to grow them all on my windowsill so this was another failure but there are like a few onion seeds that have come through i don't know whether they're going to survive but i just thought i'll plant them in this tiny space that i have around here and just if they come and i have a few onions good if they don't and they fail well i've learned something 
So the next job I'm going to do is actually plant my potatoes that I chitted before. So these were my first earlies. As you may know that I was a little bit behind. I would say about two to three weeks actually because I didn't get my seed potatoes on time. So today we're going to actually plant both the first earlies and second earlies together. That's how it goes this year. But I just wanted to show you how a healthy chit potato should look like. As you can see, it's got, you can see the leaves coming through and it's very, very healthy. And this is how a good chit potato should look like. Don't worry about the potatoes being small. Seed potatoes are supposed to be actually ideally smaller rather than too big. So this is my used compost from last year. I think uh, these were the compost that I grew potatoes from and I think a few more sort of like potted plants that had some compost. So I like to reuse them when I'm growing my potatoes. So I use half of my, not half, like nearly half old compost and then I will add some new compost to this and I would put some fish blood and bone, a handful of it, mix them all together. Ideally, if you have a wheelbarrow like this, uh, use that to mix everything together. I find that it works really well. And then we are ready to plant our chitted potatoes. So I have added a handful of fish blood and bone and some new compost and I'm going to mix them all together. This is the container we're going to grow our potatoes in. Um, you can google just potato growing containers. These are really sturdy and they've got handles on either side. They're really great. Um, so if you go google them, you, you will find them online in loads of garden centers. The first earlies and second earlies you can grow them in two layers um, so I'm, I can ideally put four seed potatoes. So as you can see I've filled my container about a third and I'm going to now place two seed potatoes on either side. So just like that. You can use the handle for like guide. And that's it with obviously the sprouting bit on the top. Now I fill the pot now about three quarters uh, with compost with those seed potatoes on either side of the handles. Now I'm going to add two more seed potatoes but this time I'm literally going to go the opposite. So before we use the handle as the guide so we're just going to go to the opposite side of it. So essentially you're just putting four seed potatoes so that would be a perfect guide. Now I'm going to fill this up to the top with some compost, uh, give them a good watering and I'm going to leave them somewhere warm. Just on my patio really. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the seed sowing for April. I thought while I was, I know it's the end of the March that I'm filming, I'm really sorry this is going to come out a little bit later. But April is the month where you have to start thinking about your frost sensitive plants. Frost sensitive plants are all your exotic vegetables, uh, like for in my instance, all my Indian vegetables, like my bitter gourds and my bottle gourds, uh, my um, Malabar spinach, chilies, tomatoes, aubergines, your lady's finger, which is okra, and all of those things are frost sensitive plants. So, what it means is that you cannot risk uh, planting them out yet because you have to wait uh, till the last date of frost has gone past. If you go onto the website online and you just type in last frost date and put the area you're in, it normally brings up a date for you. That should be like a rough guide for you. But having said that, we did have snow last week. 
So please bear that in mind. But I would really check that online to see when your last frost date is. So frost sensitive plants can be start sown, sown now. And then you still need to make sure that you have a greenhouse, preferably a heated greenhouse. And if you don't have that, try and sow them indoors and start them off. I'm lucky, one of my friends gave me a heated propagator, so which is where I'm going to start sowing all my frost sensitive plants. So I'm sowing all my chilies, aubergines, okra, bottle gourd, bitter gourd, hyacinth beans. I'm also planting some chilies, tomatoes, all of those ones are going to be the ones that I'll be sowing. I would even wait till mid-April. You don't have to rush into it and just do it the first week of April. Because what I found from last year is plants do catch up. Because last year, as you may have seen in a garden transformation, it took us a very long time to get that done. And then I was sowing a lot of seeds after that because I lost a lot of seedling. And they were absolutely fine. So there is no need to rush into it. So wait till about like even mid-April and you can sow all these seeds. So those are the seeds that you need to be thinking about sowing. Something else you need to do as well in April, it is sowing your, planting your main crop potatoes. So I would also do that around mid-April. I'm not in a rush because I've got plenty of first earlies and second earlies to see me through. So I don't really rush into my main crop. So I always leave that to the mid-April as well. So this, I've started the chitting. They just sat there on the side. But that is something else that I will be doing this month. The other thing I'm going to be thinking about is sowing all my flower seeds. I don't sow a lot of flower seeds earlier on in the spring, only because I have plenty of uh, bulbs like tulips and daffodils that I plant in autumn. And my garden is full of colour, so I don't really bother a little bit earlier. So all my summer flowering flower seeds, like calendulas and marigolds are a must because they are beneficial insect attracting plants so they'll be first on top of my list and then on top of that i have cosmos delphiniums lupins larkspur zinnias lobelias pretty much everything really anything that looks pretty and dahlias all your dahlias and everything so this is the time you need to really think about planting your flower flowering bulbs and lilies all those bulbs and seeds start them now because that would be perfect because by the time they've all just grown you would finish your spring color and then you can plant these summer flowering uh, plants so that's it pretty much really uh, i hope it was useful for you and i'll see you next time with another video bye